Hey guys, Johnny Galt with Iron Lotus Tattoo in Boulder, Colorado, back with another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to increase your ability to color a tattoo in only one day by helping advance your understanding of what colors you want to place within the tattoo and how to fade colors to the edges of your tattoo to create depth, vibrance, and strong coloring. Now, to get this whole thing started and kick it off, I'm going to start by saying that... If you guys want to do good color tattoos, you really need to evaluate yourself and your setup. A lot of people always overshoot the importance of the equipment in their arsenal. The way that you got to look at yourself and look at your machines when you actually start to tattoo, you need to answer a few questions to yourself, and if you answer yes to any one of these questions, you need to change up your setup. First thing you need to ask is, have you ever had successful coloring with a traditional coil machine? If you have not, you need to ask yourself, did I pursue trying to color with a traditional coil machine to the full effect that I could? Or did you jump on to a rotary machine and think that it fixed a lot of your problems? If that's the case with you, you really need to take a step back and look at the way that you're coloring your tattoos now. Now, if you don't have any of those problems and you're using traditional coil machines but you're still having issues and you're trying and trying, you need to ask yourself, are you using a machine that was hand-built by a tattoo uh, machine builder? And if you have bought it from a machine builder, was this machine builder a reputable builder who actually knows how to tattoo? One of the big issues that I see right now is there's a lot of different machine builders and a lot of guys out there selling tattoo equipment that don't know what the fuck they're doing. Buying stuff from eBay just because the tattoo machine looks cool or it's from a guy who seems to know what he's doing doesn't mean that it's guaranteed you're going to get the right results. Now, when you guys purchase your tattoo machines, you need to find a reputable source. Workhorse Iron, Union Machines, guys like Adam Safiri, Seth Safiri... Um, Brandon Feldman, Dan Torres, my company, Panther and Dagger Iron, stuff like that. We're guys that actually sit here and we machine these particular items out, but they're custom-made machines with a job in mind. To give you guys an idea, I have both color packers and shaders here at my disposal. This particular machine right here, this is a shader. This is for specifically shading in like black and pepper shading tattoos. It runs a different way than a traditional color packer ever will. Now at 3.5 volts, you know, at the test speed, it bogs because it's got about a mid-level hit, but it's not the same as a, re a regular color packer. What you need to find is a traditional style color packer like so that's going to push the right type of needle. Very, very clean, solid hit with a consistent stroke, with a very, very long, big stroke. And that fucking hurts my thumb to do that, so I'm not going to do that anymore. But machines like this and this one right here, this particular machine is one that I freaking love, the Thorm's Hammer. This thing is a monster. I can't even fucking do that because that hurts so damn bad. But you guys get the gist of it. You need to look at your equipment. Look at your machines. You need, some people that I've, act, I've actually seen guys that are complaining, yeah, man, I'm not getting the right type of effects when I'm trying to color. And then I t they, they say, hey, can you take a look at my setup and help me find out what I'm doing wrong? I help these guys by looking at their setup, and then it turns out they're using like a liner machine that they thought was a shader. They're using something that wasn't even designed to cut pack color, and they've been, you know, tearing people's skin up wondering what's going wrong, and it's because they didn't buy from a reputable source. So, if you guys are interested in buying any type of tattoo machines, and you want to actually get a real one, go to www.pantherandagger.com to purchase our handmade custom tattoo machines that have the artist and the design in mind. Now... Today I'm going to be taking the time to show you guys exactly how to color tattoos. Something that I see that drives me fucking crazy, it drives me up the wall, is when I see people who tattoo and they don't understand how to get color effects like this within the skin. The first thing you got to make sure you're doing is you got to make sure that you're using the right kind of needles. 
If you're not using the right type of needles in the skin, it's not going to work. I see people that are putting in color in traditional American or Japanese work and stuff like, you know, they do color work like this and they're not using the right needle. You want to use the right kind of needle, get something that's the right type. I said I just picked up the wrong fucking cartridge and I actually don't know where it just disappeared to. There we go. This is a long taper magnum. Okay, or not long taper, this is a short taper. This is a short taper mag where the tapers on the needle are very, very short. The reason that they're short is because when they make impact with the skin, the shorter taper is essentially wider and shorter in the direction that it splits the skin to place the ink. Now, what this will do is it will place the color in more solid and faster because the principle of coloring is to get in and get out. You want to cause as little trauma as possible, and the way to do that is to be there as, le as little time as possible. Don't go fast, don't layer the shit out of it, but get in, get the color solid in one pass, and then get out. So you got to do it right. It's not about doing it fast, it's more about doing it right. Now, with that being said, and establishing that you should be using short taper needles instead of just textured needles. Well, textured needles do work. You want to use short taper needles if you're starting out and you don't know how to use a textured because they can damage the skin very, very quickly. Now, with that being said, I'm going to show you guys some of these little areas in here that they don't really seem to make sense to a lot of people, but once you guys watch this video, it's going to make plenty of sense to you and you're going to feel really, really confident stepping into your next color piece. Now, if you look at some of the colors that we have within here, you see these darker spots in this area of the tattoo where you got darker areas right here, and then you got darker areas here, where this is a peony's flower, so there's always going to be a differentiation of color. But you have these areas where there's a darker color. The biggest mistake that I see is I see people who see this right here and they go, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put a bunch of gray wash. Like I'm gonna put mid gray wash right here and then shade it. And then I'm gonna take my red and I'm gonna put my red over this entire leaf. That's not how you color. If you wanna get real in-depth color, like Corey Norris or some of the best fucking people, like Valerie Vargas, these people that put beautiful, solid, and Darcy Nett, people who put this great color in, you need to understand how to do this. This is where learning how to watercolor paint comes into tattooing. This is why apprentices are forced to watercolor paint all throughout their apprenticeships. Because watercolor, watercolor painting makes you understand a principle of how to color blend while you're tattooing. You wouldn't be placing gray wash in these areas. No, 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 not at all. You would have two different colors of red. A red that matches the tone in here and a lighter red which matches the tone on the outside. Confusing? Not really. Very, very simple actually. See, you have this area on the, let's, let's say we're doing this petal right here with color. To do the reds in this petal right here, you would have a darker red here and then a lighter red which you would fade to the outer edges right here. Where this is the lighter red, it's just faded with some whip shading towards the end. Now, people would look at this and be like, I don't really get what you're saying. To help you guys understand it, here's what we would do. We would take two reds. Here I have an eternal deep red, which is a much darker brownish red that looks almost blackish, and then a brighter, lighter red, which could be blended away by fusion. So what we would do is you look at these two colors. You would use the darker color first. You would take this deep red and place it in this area on every single petal in the darker areas. And once you were complete with that, you would take this lighter color red and then place it on the edges of this and blend it so that these areas overlaid with one another, that the darker red and the lighter red met. Almost so to the point where there was a fading. You could whip shade this darker red out going backwards with the mag with quick moving strokes to blend it from this color to this color and then when you reach the edge you would use the lighter red and break it down with a clear solution or with your whip shading and lightly and gently brush towards the tips to soften your color. 
Now, if that doesn't iterate it for you, another thing that people see is they see stuff like this, where you see this darker green here. You see a darker green inside of this leaf right here, and then a lighter green on the outside. People would say, yeah, that's kind of confusing. I'm not really sure how to do something like that. It's very, very simple. For the inner green here, you would literally color in with an eternal, this is an eternal uh, green, this is Liz Cook's forest green, and then on the outer edges, I would use Fusion's gamma green on the outside edges to make it brighter and much more vibrant. There's no gray wash on the insides of these. If there would be, it would be very, very minimal. But trying to use gray wash, which is essentially black, to alter the color in the skin as you're placing it is the incorrect way to color a tattoo. That's why when you guys would probably, what people don't understand, especially new tattoo artists or people that are home artists, you guys would think, oh yeah, you know, I got this, um, I've got this red right here, and I'm just going to put all this black. I'm going to put black gray wash, where gray wash is essentially just a shade of black. I'm going to put it all the way here, but I'm going to fade it all the way with this dotted line is the this is the faded gray wash representation right here so they put the gray wash in here they fade it out to here and then they put this red over the entire thing you know what happens this shit back here turns into a funky off color where it's not even really red it doesn't even look like this shit right here it doesn't it doesn't look correct at all it has no depth to it it doesn't make sense and it's because when you put this red and that black together in the skin, these colors, ink, mixes under the skin. That's something that's forgotten very, very quickly and it's, or, or just not taught to artists who are you know, striving to try and learn new things. That's something very, very detrimental to artists who are just starting out. So if you were going to try and create the right effect, you would want two of the right colors. This is why it's so important to have a full ink kit of a good brand of ink. The best brand of, the ink, in my, of, of ink, in my opinion, is Fusion Colors. If you guys don't know what Fusion is, and you don't know who Adam Everett is, you guys need to find out, because you're messing out big time. There's a lot to be had here, and this ink will improve your ability to lay down color by tenfold. I am willing to stake my entire name reputation and ability as a tattoo artist on this ink's name. This is the best ink, in my opinion, on the fucking planet. With that being said, now that you guys know how to blend these colors out, here's the question. How would you do something like this right here? You got these two colors right here. Now, I don't have my orange with me, but on the inside I would have this, like, this atomic yellow right here, and I'd probably have like a wet sand color. What you actually have here is you have three. So I would have a wet sand color, I'd have this yellow right here, and then I'd have a little bit of the, the fusion lemon drop. And what I would do is I would take my wet sand and have my wet sand from solid from here to here, but then I would whip shade my wet sand all the way to here, I would have my yellow overlaid, and then I'd have my, my atomic yellow soft shaded to here, and then I would do my lemon drop all the way to here. And that's what creates a beautiful blend from one color to another. That's how you guys do this. So, wet sand, atomic yellow, and then in here you'd have lemon drop. Here, 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 all the way back. And that creates this beautiful, beautiful color. Now, the next piece of flash that I'm going to go ahead and move on to, this is a piece that was, uh, this tattoo flash was John, done by a young man by the, John, uh, by the name of uh, John Gurr, Jonathan Gurr. You guys can check out his Instagram at foreverxshady. I believe that's his name. If you guys want to follow my machines and see what else is coming out, you guys can follow my Instagram. My Instagram is johnnygalt001. But moving on to show you guys another principle here, this is a watercolor piece of flash that reiterates what I was just teaching. You can see here, throughout here, that to create this tattoo effect, John used different types of colors to create this effect. Now, these lines right here are made with this type of violet. But to reiterate my point, I'm going to be showing you guys something pretty simple. In order to create this exact same effect within the tattoo, what I have to do is I need a darker pink here and a lighter pink on the edges, which is going to be softly done out. So what I would do is I would have my bubblegum pink by Fusion, and then I would have my pastel pink, which the pastel colors from Fusion are bar none. 
man. They are the number one in the damn industry right now. You guys want to get the best fucking pastel colors? Buy their pastel kit. It is the shit. I am not joking. It goes in smooth. It stays there all throughout the healing phase, and it looks really, really great. But what I would do here is I would have, like I said, right here, look around the edges. This is actually done with a watercolor where you have it here. You have a darker pink here. Here's your darker pink. You would do it like this in the skin. And now I would do it with this particular darker pink right here. And then on the softer parts here that are faded, I would take my pastel pink and work it in across here. What he's done here is he created these highlights, which, be, which could be done with a round shader. These are darker highlights done with the darker pink. And he has the lighter pink around it, which creates more depth. It's so, so simple once you guys actually see this and you experience how to correctly just color. When you look at the stuff in the very... Uh, granted, his petals are a little bit flat with these petals in the skin. He's a really skilled guy. I personally think that... I know that Johnny Greer would probably do something where, like, on this petal from about, like, here down to here, you know, he'd use a darker green, and then he would use a lighter green like this on the edge and probably follow it very closely to the edge, and it would create a really, really nice, you know, a really nice, smooth transition that creates excellent depth vibrance and contrast within a color tattoo. Now when you look at back here to the very very back one, if you guys have been paying attention you should be able to spot this just as easy. We're right here in the very very back we've got this nice beautiful reddish orange where you you know you take your reddish orange right here or um, uh, I believe the color from Eternal is perfect orange you've got it right here and then you have like the cream orange pastel which should be faded on each side. And another really good example here of with the yellows is that on the end of these petals right here, you can see on the end of these petals we have a darker yellow from here to here. So with a darker yellow you would use the atomic yellow here and then the closer it gets to the inside of the petal you could use something like lemon drop and create your overlay within the, the petal right here between here and here, and it softly blends it. It makes a soft, pillowy type of effect of the color. Now granted, these aren't just like the simple basics of how to, you know, hold your needle and how to move it in a circle. This is to help you guys understand that by leaving space on the ends of things, by leaving a little bit of empty space, by using more than one color and not making the mistake of adding gray wash to try and change the color into something that's not going to actually be It'll save you a lot of time. It'll also help you guys really advance as far as color goes. These, I mean, these are some of the biggest secrets of tattoos coloring that I'm actually sitting here teaching where people don't see that th these are so simple on paper when you look at them. And doing them in the skin are just as, it's just as simple to do it in the skin, but people don't realize how easy it actually is because they're not getting the right type of training or you know whatever the excuse is they don't see how simplistic this stuff really is and I'm happy that I can be here to show people how simple it is because if you guys take the time to study this and work on your watercolors and really get all the colors that you can and invest good money in your ink set and in your machines and in all of your equipment that you're using you're gonna get really really great results and it's gonna help you move forward from plateau to plateau as a tattoo artist and in, in your career itself like always guys this is Johnny Galt with Iron Lotus Tattoo in Boulder Colorado thanks for watching thanks for support remember to like rate subscribe and if you guys would like to purchase any of my handmade tattoo equipment or the equipment from the guys from pantherandagger.com remember to visit www.pantherandagger.com thanks for watching guys